Okay, so last time we have discussed the one dimensional harmonic oscillator and uh, we tried to solve the differential equation in uh, what is called an analytical method. And today we will try to learn a different approach, which is sometimes called abstract method or sometimes called operator method, or it is also called factorization method. So our starting point is, as usual, the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian for harmonic oscillator is uh, given by the kinetic energy. It's a one dimension, so kinetic energy d square over 2m plus half m omega square x square. So this is the Hamiltonian, which essentially represents the total energy. Okay, total energy of uh, of the system. Now, uh, the basic quantization was always in terms of representing the energy in uh, discrete quanta. Okay, so we say that we can define a quanta of energy or a quantum of energy, both in the works of Max Planck, Einstein, and Niels Bohr. The quanta of energy was always represented by H nu or equivalently H bar omega, where this h bar is h over theta. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, can you increase the volume? We can we can't actually clear it very properly. I have I have increased hundred percent. So maybe you have to increase from your end. Uh, ours is also maximum, sir. Like few of I have asked few of us to. Uh, this is the same with everyone. Hello, is this better? Uh, yes, sir, we can hear, but volume is not that high. Maybe we'll try, sir, we'll try to manage. Yeah, I think there is nothing that I can do here. Uh, maybe next time I have to see if I can change this uh, earphone. Yes, sir, okay. So this is uh, H cross omega, the quantum of energy. So we can we can ask a question what is um, the hamiltonian this is the total energy divided by h cross omega so that is basically p square by twice m h cross omega plus uh, m omega by 2 h bar into x square that is, if I divide by h cross omega, this is what I will have. Now, physically, this means that uh, we have, this is essentially represents what is called number of quanta. Number of quanta. This is classically, I mean, uh, the total energy divided by the energy of the quanta will give us the number of quanta. Now, supposing if I um, if I want to write down this um, as an operator, okay. So, uh, in terms of in terms of operators, one can represent this as the Hamiltonian operator divided by h bar omega is equal to uh, m omega by 2 h bar into x square operator plus 1 by 2 m h bar omega into p square operator. 
so this is how so this is essentially an operator now we would like to uh, write this or factorize this okay so for factorization what we can do is we can try to define uh, an operator like this okay so in order to factorize let's define define an operator we'll call it as a which is equal to square root of m omega by 2h bar into operator x plus i times operator p divided by square root of twice m h bar omega now why i'm writing this as x plus ip because only then when i when i take x plus ip and x minus ip i will get x square plus p square kind of a term but there will be something more because these are operators so but let us define it in this fashion or equivalently i can pull out um, i can pull out m omega by h bar uh, square root of m omega by 2h bar i can pull this out and then i can write this as x plus i p an x operator and an ip operator so i have pulled out m omega and m omega is not there in the numerator so i multiply root m omega root m omega so this m omega will become 2h bar is there so that i can pull out so this simply will become p by m omega okay and once i define this i can calculate the or find out what is the adjoint of this one a dagger x is a hermitian matrix p is a hermitian x is a hermitian operator p is also a hermitian operator so x dagger is same as x p dagger is same as p now this i is a complex um, <coughs> index imaginary number it will become minus i so the a dagger operator is simply square root of m omega by 2h bar into x minus i p x is an operator p is an operator by m omega okay so this is uh the definition of a and a dagger so we are going to define this and then we ask a question that what will be a dagger a okay so let us let us find a dagger a so a dagger a is equal to now m omega by 2h bar under square root is there in both the terms so that becomes m omega by 2h bar and you have x minus ip x operator minus ip operator by m omega this is a dagger and x operator plus ip operator by m omega this is for a so that is what this is so this is equal to m omega by 2h bar into i can write down this is x square operator and uh, you can have cross terms plus i by m omega into x operator p operator minus p operator x operator these are cross terms and then you have p square 
by m square omega square. Okay, so this is what um, we have. But note that, so this is essentially uh, m omega by 2 h bar into x square plus p square divided by 2 m h bar omega. Okay, 2 m h bar omega plus this term, this i by m omega into m omega by 2 h bar, that will become i by 2 h bar into what is written here, xp minus px is the commutator of this x operator and p operator. Now look at this one. So this is, if I write down, um, so if I write down omega and omega in the numerator and denominator, this is equal to, so this, so this part, as you can see, okay, so this part of the equation, and if you go back and you recognize that that is essentially h Hamiltonian divided by h cross omega. So this part of it is actually equal to Hamiltonian operator. So these x square and p square are operators divided by h cross omega and i by 2 h cross and this is the commutator of x and p and commutator of x and p is basically equal to i h bar. Of course, i h bar into an identity operator. So that means this is uh, i h bar okay, into an identity operator. So the h bar will cancel. i into i is minus uh, minus 1. So this is equal to, so what is A dagger A? A dagger A is equal to Hamiltonian divided by H cross omega minus half. Okay. Or in other words, the Hamiltonian can be written as, in terms of these operators A and A dagger, it is A dagger A plus half into h cross omega. So the Hamiltonian operator in terms of the operators A and A dagger is written in this fashion. Now here, we call a number operator is equal to a dagger a because this classically it is related to the number of quanta we call this as number operator so a dagger a is called the number of op number operator so this is how we write down the Hamiltonian in terms of this A and A dagger. Now we require to uh, learn some results. Okay, so this is how first we get the Hamiltonian in terms of these operators that are defined. And notice that if it is simply A dagger A, it is a perfectly factorized thing. Whereas here you have a plus half and this is uh, we will realize that this plus half is very important. And now we will try to, uh, some properties of this A's and A daggers we will try to understand. Okay, so I did not know, probably I did not write a number for that, but let's call whatever we have done so far is one. 
So now we will try to get some experience with this. Some properties of this A and A dagger. A, A dagger, and what's the number operator N? First thing is, um, starting from some of these things, I will leave it for you to work out. Starting from the commutator x comma p is equal to i h cross. Show that. Show that the commutator a comma a dagger is equal to one. Okay, so I want you to show this. So please show this. This is just an algebra. So I am sure you will be able to do this. So show that from xp is equal to ih cross, you can show that a dagger is equal to 1. In fact, in quantum mechanics, this commutator a dagger is equal to 1 is so fundamental, it is almost equivalently uh, considered as xp equal to ih cross. Now, secondly, uh, using this fact, so using using uh, a, an identity, for commutators, given by, you have an operator A and then there is a product of operators B and C. So we want to, we want to talk about a commutator of A with B, C. So this is equal to A with B, into C plus B into the commutator of A with C. So use this identity for commutators uh, and show that the operator A comma n okay uh, so what what is a comma n a comma n is equal to i do not know what that will be i don't remember so let us try to write this so a what is n n is a dagger a correct so that means if I use this operator identity, this will be a comma a with a dagger plus a into a comma a dagger. You follow? So that means what? a comma a is 0 because it is the same operator. And this is equal to 1 which is what you have shown, you are supposed to have shown in the result one. So, so this is what, this is simply A. Correct? So show that this is equal to one. So I have already shown this here. Okay, but you can write it uh, uh, neatly. Okay, now further, Also show, also show that a dagger comma n is equal to minus a dagger. 
okay you can use the same um, same identity you can show that a dagger comma n is equal to minus a dagger so this is the second uh, set of results first is a dagger equal to 1 second is a with n commutator is a a dagger with n commutator is minus a dagger okay and third result is so let us say let n be eigen states let n be eigen states of the number operator n let n be eigen states of number operator n that means okay so n with the eigen value let's call it as n so that means our n operator acting on n is equal to some value n into state n so this is the statement that n is an eigen state of operator capital n with the eigen value n okay so now we can show show that the eigen value the eigen value n is non negative that means it cannot be negative it can be zero or it can be a positive integer so eigen value n is non negative how do i show that so let us try to <coughs> so consider consider an eigen state n okay and now you can ask so what is what is a operating on n we do not know so in general in general it will be some other state that is a operating on n will be some other state which i can call it as phi okay now what is the corresponding bra vector so what is corresponding bra vector phi the answer is this phi is equal to bra vector n now this a becomes a dagger the adjoint of that okay now consider the inner product of phi with itself the inner product of phi with itself which will be equal to n a dagger a kya karin da na n okay but what is a dagger a a dagger a is basically the operator n so which is equal to this is n and then this operator n and n so n on so this n is an eigen state of this n operator and hence this will become simply an n so this tells us that this n can be written as n can be written as phi phi divided by 
and now independent of the fact whatever is your phi 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 okay so note that phi phi has to be greater than or equal to zero and n n also has to be greater than or equal to zero so that implies your n has to be greater than or equal to zero that is n is a ratio of two positive numbers so it has to be positive so n is non negative n is non negative so these are some properties of uh, these operators now let's try to understand the nature of this uh, operators okay so in our third step let's try to understand nature of a and a dagger with respect to their action on this set of states n that is the eigen states of number operator okay so so in the first step we will try to ask uh so we know that this n operator acting on n is equal to n into n these are the number eigen states okay so now we ask a question what is the action what is the action of a on n so we can ask that question what is the action of a on n so for that let us take n and then operate a on n and we do not know what is this but we can simply call it as phi this is the most general action the most general action is that it will change the state now the next question that we ask is so so this is in general a different state now we ask a question is phi is phi an eigen state of n so this is the important question that we will ask is it also a number eigen state okay there is no there is no need to expect because when it changes the state it can change it in any arbitrary way but we are asking this question is phi an eigen state of n so to find that what we will do we will take n and then operate it on phi but this is same as n operating on what is phi why phi is a operating on n okay so since we don't know what phi is we don't know what n on phi okay but then we will try to go back to our one of our result that we have commutator of a n is a okay so we know we know that commutator of a comma n 
is equal to a. That implies a n minus n a is equal to a. So, what I will do? I will take this n a on this side and bring a on this side. Then I will write down n a is equal to a n minus k. Okay. So, use this in this equation. Okay. So, we can use a n minus a in place of in place of n a operator n a so as a result so then we get our starting point to us what is n operating on phi which we have written it as n a operating on n now instead of n a i'm going to write it as a n minus a operating on n so this i can write it as a n operating on n minus a operating on n correct but we know what is n operating on n. What is n operating on n? Because this is an eigenstate of n. So that is equal to, I have n and a operating on n minus a operating on n. So a operating on n is my phi, right? So this is equal to n times phi minus phi. So, which is nothing but n minus 1 times phi. So, what is what is our result? So, we find we found that phi which is equal to a operating on n is also an eigenstate of n. Also an eigenstate of number operator. With eigenvalue with the eigenvalue what is the eigenvalue we got? n minus 1. Because you see, we started with the n operating on phi is equal to n minus 1 multiplied by phi. So, it is an eigenstate of n with an eigenvalue n minus 1. So, that means, but it is customary to represent uh, whatever is the eigenvalue as something inside the ket, right? So, that is the quantum number associated with that. So, this we can write. Thus, we can write the state phi, okay, the state phi at least is proportional to, there can be some constant, proportional to the state n minus 1, because n minus 1 is the eigenvalue, it is proportional to n minus 1, or in other words, we can say the action of A on N is proportional to N minus 1. Okay. So, now we have to, of course, fix this proportionality constant. Okay. So, let us say that this A on N is equal to some constant C into N minus 1. So, this is some constant proportionality constant. Okay. 
So now we would like to fix that proportionality constant. How do we fix the proportionality constant? So you consider uh, the adjoint of this. That is A on N is equal to C N minus 1. Okay. Now, this is, this is one vector, right? Take the inner product of that vector with itself. Okay. So that means you can write down adjoint equation. That is N A dagger is equal to N minus 1 C star. Okay, then consider the inner product that is n a dagger a n is equal to modulus of c square into n minus 1 into n minus 1. So when we talked about number eigenstates, we assume all of them to be normalized. So this uh, n minus 1 with n minus 1 will be equal to 1. And this is n operator. Okay. So that means n operator acting on n will give 1. So this, uh, I mean, will give n and n and n will be 1. So this is n, n, n is equal to mod c square. But this n, n is equal to 1. So this implies modulus of c square is equal to n and up to a phase you can say that c is equal to square root of n. So our result is that the action the action of a on n is what is the action a on n is equal to square root of n n minus 1 so this is the action okay a on n is equal to square root of square root of n into n minus 1 Okay, so that is uh, that is good. Now let us try to ask uh, our second question. The second question is, what is the action of A dagger on N? Okay, I will leave it for you to figure this out and prove that. Okay, so uh, the action of A dagger, the steps are somewhat similar. Action of A dagger on n is given by the following. So a dagger acting on n will be, there is a factor called square root of n plus 1 and this becomes n plus 1. Okay, so this is the action of uh, a dagger. Okay, so uh, I, I request you to show this. Follow the same line of argument. Of course, you have to use now the commutator between A dagger and N. Okay, so please show this along the same lines. So, the way it is hap uh, the way it is happening is that if you if you imagine that um, so you have let's say uh, let's say these are your energy levels are the uh, not energy levels the number eigenstates in some sense okay so let us say this is 0 1 2 etc Let's say these are energy levels. Then, if you are, let's say, if you are in this state, okay, so when A is operated, A is actually bringing it to a lower state. And if you operate A dagger, it is actually taking it to the upper state. So the action is that they are actually uh, taking it to the higher states or bringing it to the lower states. Okay, so that is why 
these operators have got certain names. So this A is called annihilation operator. Annihilation operator. Okay. Or this is also called lowering operator because it lowers lowering operator. Okay. And this A dagger is called creation operator. Creation operator, or it is also called raising operator. Okay. Together, this A and A dagger okay they are called ladder operators because it is like climbing up or climbing down a ladder so they are called ladder operators okay so this is this is how the name is uh, fixed for these operators so we are talking about creation operator inhalation operator or lowering operator and raising operator okay so this is as far as um, the definition is concerned now um, let's try to look at the problem the problem is that we have to solve the eigenstates of the energy okay so 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 the the task is to find eigenstates of the Hamilton. Now, look at the Hamiltonian. Okay, so recall our Hamiltonian is something like this. Hamiltonian is equal to there is a number operator plus half into h cross omega. Okay. Now notice that um, h is linearly related. Linearly related to the number operator n. That means, so that means what? That means the eigenstates of N will also be eigenstates of H. Correct? Eigenstates of N are also eigenstates of H. Eigenstates of M are also eigenstates of C. So, so this N, the number eigenstates, number eigenstates are basically stationary states. They are basically stationary states. So, what is the energy? So what happens if you operate H on N, that is equal to N plus half into H cross omega operating on N. So N operating on N will give you small n and this is an identity which will leave it as it is. So that is equal to you have N plus half into H cross omega acting on n. So what is this quantity? So this quantity is our en. Okay, so we get uh, we get more easily in this case compared to all that uh, 
truncating the series and all that that we have done yesterday. Here it is straightforward. So we get uh, allowed energy values to be energy eigenvalues, namely n plus half into h cross omega, where n is 0, 1, 2, etc., non negative integers. Okay, so this is quantization. So quantization of energy is obtained in a straightforward manner. And E0 is the ground state energy, which is equal to H cross omega by 2. Okay, so this is the ground state energy. Which is what we called as zero point energy. Okay, uh, so let us come back to zero point energy a little later and then try to ask uh, what is the origin of this and what is the consequences of this. Okay, now we have all the uh, energy eigenvalues. Now, n is equal to zero, okay, since, um, since n is non-negative, since n is non-negative, we have zero as the ground state. We have zero as the ground state. Okay. Now let us try to define this ground state. So, so what, uh, so we can define this zero. Okay. So the ground state So we, we, we define this ground state such that, such that what happens when A is acting on the ground state? Normally, if A is acting on N, it will become N minus 1. But there is nothing below this. No, this is the rock bottom. So when A is acting on this, it should simply kill this. That means it is equal to zero. So this is how we define the ground state. Ground state is some state that cannot be lowered further. If you are applying a lowering operator, it simply kills that state. Okay, that is that is how we define the ground state. Now this one is something which uh, we can uh, uh, we can ask what this is. Okay. Uh, what, what happened? Somebody is uh, trying to ask a question or Jamam, what happened? Do you have any doubt? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Ah, okay. Then you can uh. mute it. Ah, okay. Thank you. Okay, so this is um, so this is the definition. Now we can ask a question that so suppose if we know uh, zero, okay, if the ground state is known, okay, and how to know ground state is uh, uh, okay. If you want to find out, for example, let's say uh, we would like to find out uh, what is the ground state wave function. OK, so ground state wave function. Wave function uh, in, in a position 
a position basis. Suppose you want to find that out. Then you have to represent this A in terms of the position representation. So we have, what is, what is our A? Our A is equal to uh, square root of m omega by 2 h bar. Okay, square root of m omega by 2 h bar into x plus i times p divided by m omega. Correct? So this is my A. Now in position representation, in position basis, or in coordinate basis, whatever, in position basis. So what is the rule in position basis? X cap operating on some f of x will be simply x multiplied by f of x. And p cap operating on f of x is equal to h bar by i into df by dx. This is the rule of uh, operator correspondence in position basis. So I have to write down A in position basis. So A in position basis is given by square root of m omega by 2h cross. Okay. So an operator is always uh, understood as if it is operating on a function. So this is simply x plus h bar by m omega, i i will cancel into d by dx. So this is my a. So in position in position basis, a acting on the ket 0 is equal to 0 will be translated as this particular m omega by 2 h bar into x plus h bar by m omega into d by dx into some ground state wave function. I will call it as psi 0 of x is equal to 0. Okay, so this equation in position basis equivalent to this because this is uh, this is the this is the operator corresponding to A. So A acting on psi 0 of x is equal to 0. Okay. Now, anyway, this is a constant. So this constant uh, is not 0. So x plus this is equal to 0. Or in other words, we have, this is like a first order differential equation. Right? So I have d psi 0 of x by dx is equal to minus m omega by h bar into x. Okay. So that is what is the differential equation. So now you can integrate this. So if you integrate, you get psi 0 of x is equal to, oh sorry, there is a psi 0 here, right? So that is, there is a psi 0 of x. Okay, so you get logarithm of psi 0 of x. I can take psi 0 here. So d psi 0 by psi 0 is logarithm of psi 0 of x is equal to minus m omega by h bar into x square by 2. x square by 2. Okay, so that means Plus, of course, there is a log uh, constant of integration, which I will call it as um, log A. Okay, so that implies my psi 0 of x will be equal to A into e to the minus m omega x square by h bar into 2. Now, this A we have to figure out by normalization. By normalization, we should fix it. We should fix A. That is first thing. Second thing is note that from our previous experience, note that this h bar by m omega under square root is 
some characteristic length l okay characteristic length l so that implies our m omega by h bar is actually equal to l 1 by l square correct m omega by h bar is equal to 1 by l square so if i write it like that then my psi zero of x will be equal to a into e exponential of minus x by l the whole square into 1 by 2 and remember this x by l is what we called as xi okay so we called uh, so we called xi is equal to x by l so you have a into exponential of minus xi square by 2 this is the uh, this is the expression we had for the ground state in the previous problem also correct so this is essentially the ground state wave function in the position basis okay so what i am doing is i am uh, defining the ground state such that the annihilation operator kills that state and then using the form of the annihilation operator in position basis then i obtain a differential equation so a simple first order differential equation and i can solve that to find the wave function corresponding to ground state in the position basis now once we obtain this then getting the excited states is also straight forward so for example so so let us look at um, excited states so so excited states okay first let us consider so let's say we know uh, we somehow know uh, the ground state okay then how do i get my excited state okay so we know that so use this relation that when a dagger acts on zero you will get square root of 1 into 1 okay so that implies if i want to get first excited state i will have 1 by square root of square root of 1 is 1 so you will have a dagger acting on zero okay so i operate a dagger on zero to get 1 and further i can use the same trick further when i apply a dagger on 1 then i will have square root of 2 to 3 so that implies if i want to get 2 then i will have 1 by square root of 2 into a dagger acting on 1 or i can write equivalently as 2 is equal to 1 by square root of 2 okay and just write for complete net sec 1 now a dagger the square acting on 0 correct a dagger square acting on 0 now you can continue like this for example if you want uh, if you want a, suppose if you apply a dagger on 2 then you get square root of 3 into 3 so that means i can get this 3 by 1 by square root of 3 into 2 into 1 into a dagger raised to the power 3 acting on 0 and in this fashion i can in general write in general we can we can write an nth excited state n can be written as 
1 by square root of factorial n into a dagger raise it to the power n acting on c. So this is a prescription in terms of we get any arbitrary excited state starting from the ground state. Okay, so this procedure is quite general. Okay, so now let's ask what happens uh, to this procedure in uh, position basis. Okay, so let's consider this. So let us try to implement implement this procedure in a uh, position basis. Okay. So, uh, now let us try to so this is important and one has to be a little careful in so first i will try to uh, tell you uh, so let us first uh, do a simpler thing okay so that is uh, uh, get uh, the get the wave function wave function for uh, for the first excited state first excited state get the wave function for the first excited state we call it uh, call it psi 1 upper okay so so now what happens is that this uh, 1 is equal to a dagger acting on 0. This one gets translated into psi 1 of x is equal to a dagger acting on psi 0 of x. Now here a dagger will be represented in terms of the uh, position basis. So what is a dagger? A dagger is essentially square root of m omega by 2h bar into x plus, of course, a dagger. So it is minus ip divided by m omega. So, this is nothing but square root of m omega by 2 h bar into simply x minus h bar by m omega, okay, p I write it as d by dx, okay, that is d by dx. So I'm going to just multiply this one, okay? So what will be my psi 1 of x? Psi 1 of x is equal to square root of m omega by 2h bar into x minus h bar by m omega into d by dx. And there is some a. Okay, so that uh, into e to the minus m omega by h bar into x square by 2. So you are going to just differentiate this one or just multiply this one. You will get some function. Of course, there will be a normalization constant which you have to again fix by normalizing this one. So you can see that, um, so note that that uh, excited states excited states are excited state wave function 
uh, functions can be obtained by what we call as successive differentiation. Successive differentiation. I'm just taking derivatives of the ground state. So if you want nth state, you have to differentiate this n minus uh, n times. That's all. First exercise, you have to differentiate first. Because A is written in terms of d by dx, so you merely have to differentiate. Okay, so this is as far as um, the thing is concerned. Our uh, uh, So let us try to look at this psi1 of x. So psi1 of x is equal to square root of m omega by 2h bar into x there is an a sitting here, x into e to the minus m omega by h bar into x square by 2, because this is just going to multiply that, and minus, here I have h bar by m omega and m omega by h bar, so I will have square root of uh, h bar by 2 m omega into d by dx of this, so there is an a sitting there, d by dx of this will give you um, uh, x into m omega by h bar into e to the power minus m omega by h bar x square by 2. Okay. So, this will simply you can see that uh, this one and this one will give you m root m omega by 2 h bar. So that is common here. So, um, okay. So this is actually a plus sign, right? There's a minus sign here, and a minus sign comes from here when you differentiate. So this is plus. So this gives you two times a into square root of m omega by two h bar into x into e to the minus m omega by h bar into x square. Okay, so this is the first excited state. Of course, you can find out A by normalizing this one. Okay, so this is how you have to find out uh, higher excited state. Now, let us try to uh, understand that, of course, can we make uh, an effort to get a general formula for the excited state? That is, I want to use this general formula and then write it in the following. So for that, let us try to work a little bit on this uh, the form of A. Okay, so uh, in order to get uh, in order to get a general uh, general wave function. Function. Let us uh, let us uh, recast a data in in terms of dimensionless area. So for that. You know that um, your A dagger is equal to square root of m omega by 2h bar into x. Okay, so let us look at uh, uh, this one. So I will, I will use. Sir? Sir? Yeah? Your voice has gone down, down sir. Maybe you have to. Till now it was so, okay. Is it is it okay now? Oh, yes. So this is m omega by two h bar into x. So if I multiply this one, I have uh, minus 
uh, minus uh, square root of h bar by 2m omega into d by dx. So now suppose if I write down, so we can use this L, which is equal to square root of h bar by 2m omega, uh, sorry, m omega, and then x by L as some xi. Suppose if I use the same dimensionless units, now you can see that uh, this will be equal to 1 by root 2 into xi. And what will be d by dx? d by dx is basically d by d xi into d xi by dx. d xi by dx is 1 by L. So that is 1 by L into d by d xi. Okay. So, so you can see that uh, this is our d by d psi, or in other words, d by d psi will be equal to L into d by dx. That is how we can write. So this is like L into d by dx. So that gives you minus 1 by square root of 2 into d by d psi. Or in other words, I can write this as 1 by root 2 into xi minus d by d psi. So in terms of this dimensionless variables, this is called xi minus d by d psi. Okay, so, so we have uh, we have a dagger is equal to 1 by root 2 into psi minus d by d psi uh, in terms of in terms of psi which is equal to x by l and that is dimensionless dimensionless coordinate variable Now, as I told you that uh, the operator should always be visualized in terms of uh, uh, in terms of operating on a function. Okay, so note that we have to so note that we have to. We have to get what is a dagger to the power n to uh, to get this n. So you have to raise this operator to the nth power. Okay. So this is a trick which we many times use in mathematics. You want to get that. So let's assume that uh, uh, so let us consider so consider the following thing consider an operator e to the power j square into d by d psi of e to the power uh, minus j square. Suppose you consider this operator. Now suppose you ask what is the action of this operator on, uh, on some function. And consider this operator and, and find, find the action of this operator okay okay let us call this as j square by 2 and j square by 2 this operator on an arbitrary arbitrary function
So for that, what we will do, we will say e to the power psi square by 2 and d by d psi e to the power minus psi square by 2 acting on some function of psi. So that is equal to e to the power psi square by 2. Okay, so this is anyway outside. So now I have to consider these two the d by dx is acting on these two functions. So first I will keep this uh, const f constant and differentiate this. So I have minus psi into f of psi. Okay. And plus d by d psi of f of psi. Okay. f of psi into e to the minus psi square by 2. Now this e to the minus psi square by 2 and this e to the plus psi square by 2 will become 1. So this is equal to, okay, so this is, <coughs> this is equal to, I have, suppose if I pull out, um, yeah, suppose if I pull out a minus sign, so it is like minus psi minus d by d psi acting on f of psi. So, this particular operator is like minus this particular operator because the action of it on f of z is equal to this operator acting on f of z. Now, look at our a our a as this xi minus d by d psi. Of course, 1 by root 2 into xi minus d by d psi. Here also we have xi minus d by d psi. So, we can say that, uh, so we can write, we can write our a dagger operator as minus 1 by root 2 into e to the power psi square by 2 d by d psi into e to the power minus psi square by 2. I can write it like this. So I am actually replacing this xi minus d by d xi with minus of that one and 1 by root 2 is already there in this uh, expression. 1 by root 2 is already there here. So I am retaining this 1 by root 2. So this particular, this particular uh, factor is now replaced by minus of, minus of that one. Okay, hope it is clear. Now, what is the advantage of this one? So, what is the advantage? So, what is the use? The use is the following. Suppose if I ask what is a dagger square, a dagger square will be equal to 1 by um, square root of 2 square into minus into minus it will become plus so you have e to the power j square by 2 d by d psi into e to the minus j square by 2 this is one a dagger other is e to the j square by 2 d by d psi into e to the minus j square by 2 correct now what is this? e to the minus i square by 2 into e to the plus i square by 2 is 1. So this is equal to 1 by square root of 2 square e to the power i square by 2 d to the n uh, d square d i square into e to the minus i square. By 2. Now this will be, this can be now generalized. This can be generalized 
and we can write down a dagger raised to the power n to be minus 1 to the power n divided by square root of 2 power n okay minus 1 raised to the power n divided by 2 power n into e to the power chi square by 2 into b to the n b xi to the n into e to the power minus chi square by 2. Okay, so this is something which we were able to very easily obtain because of this form of the operator. If you are actually using it in the other form, you have to expand it in binomial series and all that and it is not going to give you a very nice expression. Like that. Now let us go back to our uh, so in coordinate basis, okay, so in, uh, in position basis. In position basis, we are going to write down psi n of x is equal to 1 by square root of factorial n into a dagger raised to the power n acting on 0. Uh, so here 0 is psi 0 of x. Correct? So that is our uh, general expression for this one, right? So this is, this uh, n is equal to 1 by square root of factorial n, a dagger to the n acting on the ground state. In the position basis will be the ground nth excited state wave function will be written in this form. Now this one is something that I have already uh, obtained, right? And we know that we have already seen that the ground state psi 0 of x is equal to the normalization constant also we have determined yesterday 1 by pi to the power 1 by 4 into e to the minus chi square by 2. e to the minus chi square by 2. So let us use that. Okay. So we get we get psi n of x is equal to uh, one by pi to the power one by four into one by square root of factorial n minus 1 to the power n divided by square root of 2 to the power n into e to the power chi square by 2 b to the n by b psi to the n into e to the minus chi square by 2. This much is your a dagger on n. I have put the normalization constant like this, and this is acting on e to the minus chi square by 2. Okay. Now, we can write this as minus 1 to the power n divided by square root of 2 to the n factorial n into root pi into here what I am going to do at this point what I am going to do is I am going to multiply and divide with e to the chi square by 2. So I will write it as e to the power minus chi square by 2 and e to the power chi square by 2 that means I am actually multiplying and dividing into e to the power j square by 2 e to the n by b psi to the n into here what I have I have e to the minus j square 
and these two things together will be e to the power psi square. Okay, so that is equal to. So we have one by square root of e to the n factorial n into root pi into e to the minus psi square by p into minus one to the power n minus one to the power n e to the psi square into b to the n b psi to the n into e to the minus psi square. Okay, so this is the final expression that I have. And the final expression is if you look at this part of the expression, okay, so this is what you call as Rodriguez Rodriguez formula. Rodriguez formula for Hermit polynomial. Okay, so we are home. So now psi n of x, this particular way actually gives us the result including the normalization constant. So the normalization constant is 1 by square root of e to the n factorial n into root pi into e to the minus psi square by 2 into so this is the Hermite problem. So this is um, this is a simple uh, simple way in which we can actually use the Rodriguez formula to show that the uh, excited states are uh, related to the Hermite polynomial. Okay, so this is as far as um, the complete uh, energy eigenstates are concerned. Okay, so energy eigenvalues are given, energy eigenstates are given, and this is your uh, um, all the excited states can be represented in terms of uh, Hermit polynomial. Okay, so this is. Uh, one thing. Now there are certain uh, certain remarks in this entire thing that I would like to make. So they are uh, like this. So some remarks. So first remark is. Um, uh, with respect to zero point energy. So the origin of zero point energy is uh, is the uncertainty. In X comma Now, um, you can show that um, the average value of x will be equal to 0, and the average value of 2 will be equal to 0 for, for any of these n states. Sir, the voice is so feeble, sir. Okay, yeah. For any of these uh, end states, x equal to 0 and p equal to 0. 
now your delta x square delta x square is actually x square minus x the square okay so that implies this is simply equal to x square similarly your delta p square is equal to p square average now uncertainty uh, uncertainty tells you that uh, delta x delta p is greater than or equal to h cross by 2 but let us take the minimum uncertainty so that is equal to h cross by 2 it cannot be lower than that okay, so this is minimum that means your x square average multiplied by p square average should be equal to h cross by 2 okay so h cross square by 4 because this is square so i can write down my p square average can be written as h bar square by 4 x square Okay, if the minimum uncertainty is there, this average p square is related to average x square. Now let us try to look at the average energy. So we have a Hamiltonian. The average energy is equal to average p square by 2m plus half m omega square x square average value. But now you can see this p square can be written in terms of x square using minimum uncertainty. So that will be h bar square by 8m average value of x square plus half m omega square into x square. Now I want to minimize this. Okay, so minimize. minimize the average value of h with respect to average value of x square that is what is the average value of x square corresponding to minimum average energy so that i can obtain by taking a derivative of this h with respect to average value of x square and equate it to zero so which implies I have half m omega square minus h bar square by 8m x square the whole square is equal to 0. Okay, so that tells you that uh, your average value of x square corresponding to this is equal to okay. So, h bar square by 8m into 2m by omega square. So, m will cancel and this will be 4. So, you have h bar square by 4 omega square. So, that is what will be your average value of, uh, okay, sorry, this is x square, the whole square. Or what will be your x square? x square is equal to h bar divided by 2 omega. So this is the value of uh, x square that actually um, corresponds to the minimum value of energy. Now I ask a question, what is the, what is that minimum energy? So minimum energy, minimum energy consistent consistent consistence with uh, uncertainty uncertainty is given by so you go to your h average value of h and you have this expression, right? Uh, in this expression, you substitute your x square. 
So let's say h bar square by 8m into x square in this case is h bar by 2 omega plus half m omega square into x square that is given by h bar by 2 omega okay uh, Yeah. So now what we have is uh, this is equal to uh, this two will be like four here, and this h will go here, and this omega will go there. So h bar uh, omega divided by four uh, four into I have m plus half m omega square. So this omega omega will go and we have 1 by 4 h bar omega into m. So I think there is some mistake in the algebra somewhere here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so there is an m square also that is sitting here. So omega square m square. Okay, or this is equal to 2 omega m. So there is a 2 omega m here and 2 omega m here. So this m also will cancel. This m will cancel. So there won't be m here. So this is h bar omega by 4 and h bar omega by 4 which is given by h bar omega by 4. So this is the minimum energy consistent with the uncertainty principle. So this is what we call as zero point energy. Okay, so this is one uh, important uh, remark. And the second uh, thing I wanted to uh, tell you is uh, kind of a some consequences of this okay so so consequences there are many consequences but let me just tell one or two so first thing is that um, uh, in periodic table uh, if you look at um, uh, if you look at helium atom or helium, uh, it does not have a solid phase. Helium does not have a solid uh, solid phase. Of course, at the ambient pressures, if you pressurize, you can make it a solid at ambient pressures. This is the only element. Hydrogen also has a solid phase at 14 Kelvin or something, but helium does not have a solid phase at ambient pressure. This is because helium is a smaller atom. The zero point fluctuations are uh, dominant over, see what happens, how the phase transition takes place in general is that there is a competition between uh, uh, a random thermal energy and interaction. So when interaction wins over the random thermal energy, then there is an ordering that takes place. So you have a phase transition, one disordered phase to ordered phase, the system will make a transition. Here, the zero point energy will be so high for helium that it will never allow interaction to win. Okay, so, so zero point zero point energy zero point energy dominates 
dominates uh, down to down to zero Kelvin so that you don't have a solid phase. Now, this is uh, sometimes people ask this question in interviews that why helium does not have a solid phase and that is because of the zero point energy. Now, the second thing is that uh, I don't want to too much preempt this one, but there is something called uh, quantization of electromagnetic waves. Okay, so quantization, quantization of electromagnetic field. So when you do this quantization, uh, you have something like every mode, every mode is uh, like a 1D harmonic oscillator. Oscillator. This is, of course, true with all other fields also, but I'm talking about electromagnetic field oscillator. And, and uh, uh, so EM field, EM field is equivalent to infinitely many oscillators. Infinitely many oscillators. Okay, so we will we will have an occasion to understand how this couples in your quantum two when you do quantum field theory, little bit of quantization of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, but you have infinitely many oscillators. So each oscillator has zero point energy. Okay, so that means the ground state, ground state of electromagnetic field. has infinite energy. Basically, that is zero point energy. And this energy is, uh, so ground state, ground state is referred to as vacuum. And now this vacuum has infinite energy, has certain consequences. For example, um, spontaneous emission, which is observed in, uh, uh, in, in general, the spontaneous emission is explained because of the vacuum fluctuations. That means they actually, uh, a, a, a system in higher excited state will actually draw energy from the vacuum energy and then emit uh, to the ground state or lower states. So spontaneous emission cannot be explained without invoking this vacuum uh, fluctuations, okay? And there is a more direct uh, evidence and experimental evidence of this one, okay? So that is called um, uh, that is called uh, uh, Casimir effect. Casimir effect, where? Uh, one can actually experimentally see uh, the effect of this uh, uh, effect of this vacuum fluctuations by uh, in a laboratory. So this is a, a Casimir effect or Casimir forces. Forces is a con is uh, an evidence that there is this infinite energy in the ground state of uh, this one. And then there is something called uh, vacuum polarization. Vacuum polarization. Okay, so this is also related to this Casimir effect where uh, in the vacuum, the electron positron or particle antiparticle pairs are constantly generated and uh, then they are again disappearing. So this kind of thing is completely uh, continuously happening. And hence, uh, it is possible to, uh, in fact, people did a lot of, this is also true for any, uh, any field. So it has a very important uh, uh, consequence. I mean, many things in quantum field theory are understood in terms of the 
simple zero point energy that we learn in harmonic oscillator okay so these are some consequences and uh, there is okay i would like to um, make a, maybe the last remark that uh, i wanted to tell you that um, if you want to find like i said that uh, uh, since we know these facts that is a acting on n uh, is equal to square root of n times n minus 1 and a dagger acting on n is equal to square root of n plus 1 times n plus 1 and now you can see that um, uh suppose if somebody is asking what is the expectation value of x okay so it is easy to write this x as uh um, so you can write down square root of 2m omega by h bar into a plus a dagger correct so now you can see that uh, if you are if you are trying to ask what is x with respect to n so we have x n n but this x is related to a plus a dagger so that is 2m omega by h bar into n uh, a plus a dagger to n now you see when a dagger is acting on n this will become n plus 1 when a acting on n it will become n minus 1 and this side it is going to be n so n with n minus 1 and n with n plus 1 is 0 and hence it is just one step to see this is equal to 0 same way you can show that n p n is also equal to 0 because that is now related to a minus a dagger so that is also equal to 0 now i would like you to show okay so this is an exercise show that show that uh delta x into delta p is great is equal to okay n plus half into h cross for set n now if i put n is equal to 0 it is h cross by 2 that is the minimum uncertainty now how do you do this you write down your delta x as x square I mean the square of delta x as x square minus x to the square similarly square of delta p as p square minus p to the square now we have already shown that average x and average p are zero now we have to find out average x square so average x square is basically 2m omega by h bar into n into a plus a dagger the whole square and you notice when you do the square you get a a dagger a dagger a terms and they will uh, have some non zero um, non zero entries in this uh, expansion and that will give you some non zero value for the x square and for p square and then you try to find out this is the uncertainty for an arbitrary state in n Okay so I will stop here and if there are questions you can ask Hello sir yeah. Sir can you share the drive link for the last class that's on Friday that many of those videos are missing in that uh, folder i do not know why yes sir many of them are not there any of you know why what is the reason for missing any of you know